In the second section today, we're in the third. In the second section, Carl You're was like, I've this. got a theory about murderers that their names make them sound like murderers before you even know they're murderers. And Ooh, now he's asking how to kill this. people. See? Well, no, that's all right. yeah. Michelle, John yeah. Wayne, it's Gacy. Utter bollocks. It's not. Ian Huntley. Yeah. 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 John Wayne Gacy. Yeah. yeah. Come on. Uh, yeah. Fred West. Yeah. Ooh. It's Bam Bam Fred West. <laughs> If it was like Nicholas West, no. Yeah, it's Nicholas like West. I'm like, oh, well, I'll go back yeah, to Yeah, he makes cool. the tuna, but it's two, in it? Bam, bam. That's John West, isn't it? But it's, <laughs> bam, it's bam. Like Rose West, Fred West. I need better whites. <laughs> <laughs> Myra Hindley. You're not leaving your kids with her. I'm no, right. Not, not now that I know. Yeah. I think it's, you're coloured by the fact that you know. No, I, I think some people have got murder names. You're talking also shite, and Do I can't not... believe anyone's agreed with you. Adam Rowe isn't. No. No. Oh. no. It, I don't know. He's like, fucking leg of lamb. <laughs> Twat. Eat no, over the... I, I, I'm not talking like a, a, a random needless murder. I'm just talking about if someone's ever wronged you. <laughs> Cooked him a lamb. There's someone I've thought about killing about once a week for about five years. Mm. No. What, the same person? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, he's dead. If I ever get the opportunity, he is dead. Oh, I know what you mean. Yeah. So how was New York? <laughs> New York was nice. Yeah, it was. Yeah. I know uh, when did you move there? In 2000. Did you ever do stand-up over there? Yeah, that's where I started. Was it, yeah? Yeah. So I thought you were from New York. No. When I first met you. Yeah. Because someone said, oh, that's Michelle. It was that top secret. That's pretty yeah. much all. I think that's where we've met there yeah. every time we've met. Like, oh, Michelle, she's, from, she's over from New York. Yeah, I was. Yeah. But like, I'm not from there. Yeah, but you can understand where can you I made I've that mistake. Imagine I've been back two weeks and I'm like, you're right. <laughs> <laughs> uh, how long has she been back? A week. <laughs> do you live back over here now? Yeah. Yeah. How okay. long were you in New York? You went over to do modelling? Yeah. And then you tried stand up? Yeah. Oh my God. I know. That's... I thought I was funny because I was hanging out with models. <laughs> I, I was like, I was like, oh, it's top notch banter coming from me here. I'm sitting in the room of light. But um, yeah, then I started stand up and I was like, oh, right. This is hard. Yeah. How long ago was that? Like 11 years ago. Oh, okay. Yeah. So we're similar. I'm 12 years in. Yeah. 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 What's, what was it like starting out in New York, especially when you're English? It was good, actually. I, f I think it was, I'm really happy that that's where, like, my early years in stand-up were. Because I just think it's like, you got you build a better community of comics. This is in my opinion. Do you know yeah, what I yeah, mean? Yeah. And, like, I just, I, and also you can get to, like, loads of gigs in a night. There's no money involved. No one's getting paid to do it. So you get to, like, fuck around and you're truly doing it because you're passionate about it whereas I feel like here quite quickly it's like well can I get on telly again I've got to go to Edinburgh and then like making money and then you can get sort of stuck in your set quite a bit because you're making money so you're not like playing around as much and you're probably not meeting comics on different levels the way you would in New York in New York where people just pop in I've done New York like, twice and I love the vibe right? out there. I absolutely love it do you enjoy it yeah I think that's the only other place I've ever been on the planet that I could see myself living yeah, exactly. I'll never leave Liverpool unless it's for New York. Or yeah. maybe Austin now that it seems like every fucking comedian in America has been into Austin. Have you been to Austin? No. It's nice. Yeah. Yeah, it's all right. I've done about I've never done stand up there, but I've been there. It's yeah. all right. It's a vibe. But, but there's Texas. a lot of comics moving there now. Yeah. Um and I think that might become the new LA. I think comics might leave LA. Yeah. Stand up yeah. in LA is horrible, man. Is it yeah? Yeah. Really brutal. Just so what's the difference? What's the difference between stand-up in New York? and Because they've both got TV and film going on there. There must be producers knocking around everywhere. I, I would say that, like, I mean, look, people go to LA for a multitude of reasons, but they're all kind of under the umbrella of fame and entertainment, right? And success is seen as fame out there. So I think when you're in LA, you get a lot of people, as far as the stand-up scene, might not necessarily be there because they're that into stand-up, but they're there using stand-up as a vehicle to sort of cast the net wide and maybe something will stick in one way or another, right? Yeah. So they're doing stand-up, but they're also doing drama. They're also acting. They're also doing, you know, like improv. And they're just doing a bunch of shit and thinking, fuck, hopefully something is going to stick right. here. For success. And they're only really there because of the fame game. Right, because that's, that's you know, that's the light that brings you as the moth to it, right? But so I feel like in New York, people are there to really try and like crack the craft, as it were. Because there's not much reward from doing it other than getting better. Yeah. Right. 
I, I know exactly what you mean. Do you know what I'm saying? To American podcasts, I think comics say it that way as well. Like meeting comics out there, they're out on a Wednesday doing three or four sets, and they don't need to be. But these right. are people who have got yeah. big hit podcasts, roles in sitcoms, host their own shows. They do something. They're out on a Wednesday doing four sets because they're like, oh. I yeah. want to get better at this. Ari Shafir moved back to New York and uh, listening to him talk about the differences, like it sounds like that if you're the purist. That's why I love it because as you know and all of our listeners are well aware, I'm obsessed with getting really good at stand-up mm. and it just seems to me like if you really truly want to do that, New York has got to be the place yeah, to do it. Yeah, yeah. Like, you know what? I've been there for I a few years. I said that to him last night. Yeah, and I'm like, I want and my plans to go back in October and I was chatting to my agent and I was just like, I just feel like I need to like brush up my stand up a bit because I uh, you just get a bit you can just you can get a sort of full sense of of self yeah yeah because everything's quite safe you're making money it's going all right you can sort of like lean into your sets that you know that work there and I kind of miss like like me and um Russell Hicks were chatting about this because we was at Top Secret and then um and then Mark come he's like oh um uh, Dylan Morange just turned up and he's going on, then Russell Howard's going on. And we were like, fucking yeah, because then you're a bit like, Wah! you know, like gets you on your yeah. toes and gets you amped, right? And um, and that's what happens in New York all the time, which is good because you kind of want to have that moment where they're like, oh, um, Jim Gaffigan's just jumped in. He's going to jump on before you. And then you want to sit there and shit yourself and go, how the fuck am I ever going to be able to follow that? Yeah, you're I not, am. but it's good to try it out yeah, and like yeah, yeah. Totally. at least push yourself where you're like, I'm going to give it my all. And I don't know if you get that many opportunities to watch other stand-ups that are at a much higher level than you and have to be on the same bill as them. Like, it's important. These are kind of good... Not and, not and makes me better on stage than the person before me smashing it. Right? And sometimes you can't follow it. No, I have to follow... you can't. But you pat yourself on the back for giving it a fucking try, right? Yeah. So following Schultz in front of his own crowd in New York was mm. not easy mm. or you're like oh i did a good account of myself there and i did better than would have if he wasn't on right a couple of weeks ago i don't know whether i even told you about this or spoke about it on the pod i might have so forgive us if this is repetition it's during the london store weekend and it was the last show the saturday late show and i had to close the late show and i was just done i'd had a panic attack at top secret because it was too hot and i couldn't get my words out properly oh, God. And you know, it's your fifth set of the night at the store and i'm like i just haven't got this gig in me at all i'm just yeah. done and I'm like, I'm just going to have to phone this in. I'm just going to have to. And Babbitt Sunday was on right before me. And he absolutely smashed it. And I went, well, I haven't got a choice now. I've just got to go on. And and I had the best set I had all weekend. Right. When, when I did not have that left in me at all, like it had gone. I, I, I was already in bed in right. my head. I was like, I'm done for the night. I'm emotionally and like physically exhausted. I just need to go on, go through the motions to get the thing done. And he twatted it and he come off and I went, what the fuck was that? And he went, what? And I was like, and he went, do you know who you are? And I went, yeah, yeah, I do. Actually, I'll be fine. And I, I just literally dug as deep as I could, went on and overperformed every bit. And I was like, oh, that's actually what I'm supposed to do at every gig. Yeah. You know what I mean? Because sometimes I think when you're when you're doing gigs, 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 you can just get a bit stuck in your own head and you're traveling, you're on your own and, and you kind of sometimes forget like, my job is to make you lot laugh. Of course we know that. But you know, when you watch someone absolutely destroy like bubble Tunde, i've never seen him not kill a yeah. fucking room right but you kind of i'm like oh yes like i want to at least try and be as good or better than you that's yeah. important oh being right? on a bill with guys who have all phoning in who all don't want to be here the old jonglers like negativity of like uh no one wanted to be there right it's so bad for your stand-up to surround yourself with that yeah to be on a bill especially if the cause sometimes when you go on after someone if it's not a great crowd, this you know, and they're any, they're like attention spans low, or whatever. That's not, right, but that's not what's going on there in Top Secret. They're a great crowd. He's going on and smashing it, but there's still this is the a store. gig. This is the store. Good gigs in London, proper gigs, hot water. The gigs in New York, I bet. Like there's still something in the crowd. Being around really good comics who are trying brings it out of you, doesn't it? I'm sure the analogy works for so many creative things and even sport, like surrounding yourself with people who are making you want to be better because you're inspired because you're competitive that's yeah. so good yeah yeah man it's totally. that it's that healthy competition do you know what i mean and i think if you get yeah. a bit too cocky you sort of like you can drop the ball a little bit or get too complacent and be like oh, i don't want to i'm not yeah. that, that is the most attractive thing about new york to me yeah is that you're always gonna have to go on after someone famous or brilliant has been on so who 
of all the acts you can think of, who's the one comedian who, because they're brilliant or because they're similar to you, who would make you go, oh, fuck? Who's the one act that you would be like, holy shit, this is going to be, this is going to be rough? What, as in following? Here. As in, fo- as in say, I tell you, I tell, say we you were know, playing the Runcorn you know, Arena tonight. Right. You know, do you know who would be at the moment? Jordan Gray. Okay. Because Jordan Gray is doing some next level shit, right? We did the Pleasance. I hadn't, I, hadn't, I hadn't met her before. And we did the Pleasance Theatre in London. And I was like, all right. And they were like, oh, she's closing. I was like, oh, I haven't seen her before. I watched her and I was like, thank fuck for that. Because if I had to follow Do you whatever know who she the is? fuck. I've never, never worked so with So Jordan her. Gray is a, a trans comic who's just been nominated for the best show at yeah. the Singe. Right. Yeah. But like four, like majority five and a couple of four star reviews. And just bl- absolutely bladdered the yeah. fringe. A show is called "Is It a Bird?" Fucking hilarious, right? Where- <laughs> so good. She, she she sings, and as a comic, when you see anyone get on stage with any kind of instrument, you're just like, "Yeah, all right then." <laughs> Do you know what I mean? <laughs> this woman is fucking a powerhouse, and the comedy is on point, and she's just. She's doing shit that I haven't seen anyone do. And she's someone that, like, I'd in this country, I'd be like, yeah, boy. Do you know what I mean? Like, yeah. I would shuffle onto the stage after. <laughs> do you know what I mean? And just be like, everyone, this is a palate cleanser. Fucking yeah. relax. <laughs> Who's the hardest person you've ever had to follow, do you reckon? Tom Stayed. Yeah? Mm. Yeah, Tom Stayed, who has to go in the middle at a gig in Manchester on a Saturday night just after Meat Van had come out. Like, they knew... That he, it was him just as he broke, and he was like, "Yeah, I need to go on in the middle." I think the promoter was like, "Yeah, because he's got to get somewhere." And it turns out he just kind of fancied doing the middle, <laughs> and he was just in a position where he could basically say, "I want to do it." He wasn't; be, he didn't know who was meant to be closing, so I got moved around, and I, I tried my best. I did that thing of like, just try your best, smash it, yeah. and someone went, "Fair play." That like as I came off, went. Fair play, gave that a good shot. <laughs> One as good as Tom, but you were good. Yeah. Like, and I, yeah, and fine. I think there are times when you have to be like, I, I didn't go, the worst thing you can do is go, oh, I should, uh, like even bitch at the crowd about it. I'm not, like, no, I, I'm should, like, I, not- I mean, this is ridiculous. I shouldn't be here. Just get your fucking head down and do the shift. I'm sure I've been guilty of a whinge here and there, but it's so much better when you go, do the fucking gig, you're good at stand up, and if if in the end you're like, yeah, Tom was bet, like he was, you that was move, Tom stayed you at his best. You gotta move past that, man. I think you can do that in the first few years of stand up, where you can kind of be like, yeah, the audience, the crowd, blah blah blah. But mostly, I think if you're honest with yourself, it's normally something to do with you. Even if you get up and you kind of decide, definitely sometimes audiences can be a bit off and janky. You don't know what's happened before. But more than anything, if I've had a weird gig, I kind of know something is going on. In You've me. had a bad day, you were late, you're yeah, stressed, you're I'm, sweaty. You I'm can't... sort of offbeat. Yeah. I'm sort of in my head a bit. I've decided how it's going to go before I go on. I've, I haven't given it the right thought. I'm not getting on stage with the right intention. I'm a bit pissed off. My ego's a bit inflated. Something is normally going on with me because when I'm like humble and like what I want to do is fucking make these people laugh and I'm going on light and wanting to entertain people, the gig goes fucking well. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? But I will say in New York, I remember being at the stands, which is like great venue, but the people that would drop in, I was I was about to go on stage, they were like, Jim Gaffigan's turn up. I was like, wicked. So he went on and then I had to and then they, they went David Tell's turn up. And I was just like, make it end. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> make it end. And uh, and and I went on and of course like I'm not gonna be as good as those guys. They're, do you know what I mean? But to I'm honored to be able to share the stage and and try my best to follow. Yeah, you know what I'm saying, and I that's Chappelle. Like we were talking because Chappelle was is in Liverpool, like last night and tonight, and these guys were there last night, and he was at Hot Water. What? If, some, if someone had Are to you fucking serious? Going on Chinese after Chappelle, Dave Chappelle, at two o'clock in the morning. You didn't. Oh, we did. Oh, we yeah. did. Yeah. Yeah. 